Hello, hello everybody, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to Gilded Shadows by Steamberry Studio. Yep, we are starting a new adventure, and as you can see by this menu screen, we've got nine routes that we have to do. So, we get a sneak peek at all the boys here on the screen, which is delightful. Uh, let me just give you a quick rundown of the story before we jump into this. So... The story is, Arcalis is a planet with a complex history. Centuries ago, when humans arrived, they found it abandoned. The only remnants of its previous society were massive biodomes dotted on the surface and designed as protection from the hostile climate. With one side of the world bathed in eternal day and the other cloaked in frigid night, the biodomes are oases where people live sheltered from the scorching winds and storms. But whether in the bright, clean cities of the day side of the planet, or the poor and crime-ridden cities of the night side, life is never simple, nor peace easy to come by. When a fateful encounter exposes Morgan Leone, a young woman who has long hid her ESP, as a queen ranked Esper, she finds herself on the run from multiple factions eager to attain her abilities. Endgame, the Planetary Defense Organization, Crimson, a notorious crime syndicate from Delphine, and even the shadowy group only known as the host. Each group sends operatives to retrieve her. Now, with several paths open to her, she must choose her allies carefully. Between light and shadow lies gray twilight, where the lines between good and evil are blurred. And in a world where the only constants are the endless day and night that divide the planet, Morgan learns those who can't adapt also can't survive. So, there you go. We're getting into a solar punk, cyberpunk kind of dealio here with also a chess theme from what I'm gathering from this and also our girl being a queen esper and stuff like that so yeah I really don't know much more other than that my plan for this game is to follow Esh's recommended list so I have that here hold on the first guy I'm looking for is Ari, which I believe is this beautiful boy right here. Now, each guy has um, a passionate ending, a sweet ending, and at least one bad ending. But there's not going to be like 15 bad endings like we had in Changeling. <laughs> I think the most I've seen is three, possibly? So, yeah, we're not getting into like Changeling bad endings here. But we are going to have a few bad endings, at least one. But I'm going to be aiming for the passionate ending first for all the guys, then the sweet, and then bad. So, there you go. Those are my plans for right now. Let me just fix my stuff over here. Perfection. There we go. So yeah. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I really enjoy Changeling. So I'm looking forward to a more sci-fi take from uh, Steamberry Studios. Should be fun. Let's uh, start a new game, shall we? Oh, right. And we can make our own character. I forgot about this, actually. I think I was talking to... I think Verly sent me an email, like, ages ago, when this the game was still having roots added to it and stuff. And what did, what did Verly say? Oh, yeah, it was about the hair color. I remember now. Um, apparently, so you can pick whatever color hair you want, obviously, but Verly was telling me that if you pick silver, that hair color is actually referenced by most, if not all, of the love interests at some point in the story. She wouldn't tell me why, because, um, she knows that I don't like spoilers, so thank you, Verly, for not telling me, but I, it did stick in my mind that I should have white hair. So I'm going to give my girl white hair. I'm going to embrace my changeling fayness <laughs> and have some white hair for my girl. But everything else, what do I want to do? Let's see. Mm. Like normally I'd go brown, but ooh, gold's kind of nice. Um, blue. Ooh, I kind of like violet too. I mean, blue, yeah. 
Ugh, torn between violet and gold. Let's go violet. Why not? I love my purple. And then for eyebrow color... I think... Eh, maybe dark brown. And then skin tone. Let's see. That is quite the look. Um... Yeah, what? let's do that. We'll do tan to silver, dark brown, and violet. I think that's a good look. And uh, apparently you're, I think from what Verley said, each CG will show your character with the options you've picked. So you could make a completely unique looking MC for each route that you do, if you so choose. But I'll probably keep her the same throughout. I haven't decided yet, but... I'm kind of leaning towards that. Anyway, there you go. There's our girl Morgan. Okay. Cautious or confident. At its best, confidence is the ability to stand up for oneself, to be adventurous, and to stray from the beaten path with courage. At its worst, it is recklessness and arrogance. It is overconfidence and making decisions without a sense of caution or foresight. At its best, cautiousness is wisdom, shrewdness, and the strength to judge the repercussions of any actions or decisions before they're made. At its worst, cautiousness is the tendency to overworry or be anxious and uncertain of one's own decisions. It is indecisiveness due to fear or weakness. I mean, I'm definitely like a cautious person myself, but I for actually forgot about this. So I'm glad this popped up. Uh, each of the guys has a mix of three traits that they all kind of gravitate towards. It'll make it easier. It's not impossible to get the endings with them with different traits, but if you have sort of like the three that they lean towards, it'll make it easier. So for the first guy, his three preferred traits, the first one is cautious. So that works out for me because I would have picked cautious anyway. We're already getting along so wonderfully. I haven't even met him yet. <laughs> He's just a picture on my menu screen. I'm already like, we're going to get along great. Stubborn or flexible. At its best, stubbornness is sticking to your own beliefs and opinions and staying resolute in your decisions in spite of obstacles, opposition, or persuasion to other sides. At its worst, it is willfully refusing to see you might be wrong, or it is refusal to acknowledge other points of view even if they're valid. At its best, flexibility is being able to change one's personal stance when the situation calls for it, to change for the better, and see other points of view than your own. At its worst, it is a tendency to be too easily swayed off the path you've chosen, or compliance with rules or orders without questioning their validity. I would tend to be flexible, but this boy wants me to be stubborn, so I'm gonna have to tap into my stubborn Nora side. <laughs> And emotional or analytical. At its best, emotional is empathy. It's being unafraid to show vulnerability, openness, compassion, and humanity towards others, and being unafraid to do what feels right. At its worst, it is impulsivity. It is lacking self-control, acting on feelings over reason, and making impulsive decisions without thinking of the consequences. At its best, analytical is inquisitive. It is making decisions based on reason and evidence without letting emotions cloud one's judgment. At its worst, it is over-reliance on logic without making room for spontaneity. It lacks compassion and sympathy for others and puts reason above relationships. <sighs> this is a tough one. I'm like a mix of these two. Before I look to see what the guy likes, I... Like, when I play role-playing games, I tend to usually play an analytical-type person. I don't know if that's because I am I lean more towards that, or because I would like to be more like that, though. Um, I'm definitely a mix of the two, I think. But this boy wants analytical anyway. Okay, we're two for three on this guy. I think we're going to get along pretty good. And I will keep the default names, I believe. So, Morgan... Leone. Oh, we're getting into it with the epic music already. 
Love the background. Reality untwisted itself, and I felt the ground beneath my feet again. Nausea hit me hard as soon as everything stopped spinning. I doubled over, my stomach clenching painfully in protest of... whatever had just happened. I vomited, gagging against bile in my throat as my stomach violently emptied itself. I tried to get a hold of myself, desperately aware of the combined presence of the two men watching me wretch on the ground. A pity I missed them. The thought flitted through my head as my legs finally gave up even attempting to stand. The floor tilted toward the ceiling, and I hit the ground, gripping my stomach with one hand while I caught myself on the other. I was still choking on the taste of acid and whatever was left in my stomach. Definitely not having the best of days. One of the two men finally crouched next to me, and his hand passed over my back. A surprisingly gentle gesture from a damn kidnapper. It's alright. Try to take deep breaths. Instinct told me to scramble away, but my body wasn't exactly in scrambling condition. I stayed in place, squinting at the ground and wishing he'd go away. The first jump can be a little disorienting. It'll pass soon. I just ignored him and focused on figuring out what to do next. I just... need to get a hold of myself. How... had all this happened? And, more importantly, what did these two men want with me? Alright, chapter one. En passant. Common route. Alright. You may be asking, how did I get in this situation? Well, it all started one day earlier. With mum. So, how did it go? Did you do okay? I don't know yet, mum. I got out of the exam 20 minutes ago. You have to have some idea of how you did. Was it hard? Did you feel like you were answering well? I kept one eye on the street signal as I listened to Mum's eager questions through the net connection. Smiling slightly at the excitement in her voice, she was always like this after an exam. Can I click on the- yes I can, yay! Alright, lore! My favorite thing! Everybody get comfy, get your snacks, I'm gonna be reading all about the lore bits. Oh, and then- oh, these have things too? Dang, okay. Um... Whoa, I'm gonna be here for a bit. <laughs> really go get some snacks. Uh, okay. Arcalis's version of the modern internet. Makes sense. A vast network of information, communication, and interconnected computers that is accessed via the nanosystem. Thanks to the nanites in everyone's bodies, the net can be accessed mentally with all information and images filtered directly into the brain or through any number of physical interfaces or devices. The net is used for information storage and transfer, as well as visual and audio communications, media, and education. It is a prevalent and indispensable part of life in the Arcalis system. The net can be accessed exclusively with physical interfaces, so Terrans, the Nomos, and citizens of Sura? Sire? Sura? are able to utilize the net in this fashion, sometimes to a slightly limited degree. Citizens with nanite rejection must also use physical interfaces and deal with the limited net access that comes with them. Arcalis. Oh dear. Well, if I press... Oh, interesting. Okay, so they're... Hold on. Ah, I have everything... Oh, whoa. Ah, <laughs> uh, Interesting. Okay, well, well, as they pop up here, maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll do them then. <laughs> Otherwise, the entire first episode is going to be me reading the damn glossary. <laughs> and nothing happened. It would be par for the course for me, but I'm going to try to restrain myself for you guys. I do think I did well. The last round was worse, so I studied much harder this time. You always study hard, Morgan, and it always pays off. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Mom, I should remind you that we don't know how well I did. I'm not sure you should be proud just yet. You know I'm proud of you, no matter what happens. She paused, and I waited for the inevitable finisher to that sentence. But you definitely think you passed, right? 
The lights switched and I started across the street along with the rest of the crowd, smirking at how predictable she was. I passed into a crowded pedestrian walkway and paused right past the dividers. Passing is never really the issue, you know. I keep telling you I have to score in the top 10% this time. Unless Dad is ready to do some major string pulling on my behalf. And we both know that even if he tries, there's no guarantee anything will come of it. I'm certain you'll hear good news. You've worked too hard to get bad news at this point. Her faith in me was sweet, but... Everyone else worked hard, too. None of them have worked as hard as you have. Oh, Mom. I doubt that's true. We all work really hard every single time. But either way, I hope I hear good news as well. When will the results be in? They said seven to ten days, but it's usually a bit faster. I'll be planning your celebratory dinner soon, so you'd better clear your schedule this weekend. Please don't plan anything too elaborate this time. Even if we do get good news. <laughs> she just laughed and disconnected the conversation. And with that, I knew another big party was in store. I bit back a yawn and dug my knuckles into my eyes, trying to ignore the fatigue creeping in. The last few weeks had been truly exhausting. Every time an exam rolled around, it was like this. For all that I kept trying to caution Mum not to get her hopes up, I really was pretty sure I'd scored well. But of course, there were a lot of smart people taking this exam. And there weren't nearly as many positions open in the next study level for interplanetary archaeology. Ooh, that sounds fun. Exams. New Albion Society is a sort of meritocracy, where there is very high value placed on skill, education, and working hard to earn higher places in society. Education is compulsory until year 10. After that, your place in higher education is earned by a series of difficult exams that are the gateway into the next level of education. Exams are a major part of every person's life until the point they either choose, or are forced, to exit the education system. How well one does in their exams will ultimately determine their place in life and what opportunities exist before them. Many other places on our callus follow similar, but often less rigid, systems. Okay. Or any other subject for that matter? Openings in the prime tiers were more and more scarce the higher you went in school, and by the third level of secondary, competition was... fierce, putting it lightly. Education Tiers In higher levels of education for New Albion, students are sorted into tiers based on their exam scores. Those in the prime, or highest, tier receive an expansion to their nanosystems, which increases their mental processing capabilities. They are also sorted into smaller classes with live teachers to facilitate their learning experience. Prime tier is usually comprised of the top 10-15% to 15 of any given age group. Students who do not enter the prime tier, but are still in the top 30 to 50% of their level, are sorted into sub-tiers which are taught primarily by AI teachers. They do not receive nano enhancements, but are allowed to continue their education at this lower level. Everyone who scores too low to progress is given the appropriate merits for their level of education, and is then compelled to graduate and enter the workforce. Sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> no pressure. Also, I just noticed... Bookstore! <laughs> uh, so easily distracted. Everyone was vying for precious few slots. And for every person that made it in, there were ten others who got bad news. I lifted my hair off my neck and started walking, holding in another yawn. The sleepiness felt like it hit all at once. I wondered if another nanosystem expansion meant I wouldn't get tired as easily. Would be nice if I could suddenly get by on less sleep or something. Oh, please, where do I get one of these nanosystems? The nanosystem is how citizens of Arcalis refer to the vast network of nanites that exist everywhere on the surface. When colonists first arrived, nanites were concentrated in the biodomes, so those who settled there were immediately infected by them. The nanites are harmless, but are what give humans access to the net and other technology on Arcalis much of which is controlled via thought rather than physical interfaces. Uh, nanites can be used to get physical and mental enhancements as well as increase cellular regeneration. 
even an increase in Psy ability. These require specially programmed nanites, however. Most citizens do not have access to this sort of expansion. Nanites were not originally present on Syrah, but were introduced in lower concentrations by human colonists. As such, Syrah has a much lower population of nano espers, as does Dion, where scientists believe most of the nanites were somehow destroyed prior to colonization. New Terra does not possess nanites, and Terrans cannot access the nano system at all. Hmm. Man, there's a lot of world building going on, but I love it. It's really interesting. I doubted it, though. Everyone knew expansions only helped with focus and memory capacity. Well, and general synaptic response and all that. You know, the huge. Um... Okay. I don't think we read this one yet. Nano expansion. All citizens of Arcalis have a nanosystem that falls within a specific set of parameters in terms of the amount of nanites with their bodies or their nanosaturation. It is possible to expand the nanosystem beyond normal, though these expansions come with some health risks and are heavily regulated across most of Arcalis. Overpopulating a person's nanosystem can lead to nanite rejection, for example, and it can make individuals more susceptible to extreme overgrowth events. As such, only certain types and levels of expansion are medically approved in most areas, though it is possible to obtain illicit expansions as well, of course. There are multiple types of system expansions, including neural expansions that increase focus and synaptic response time, bio expansions that can enhance cellular regeneration, and even psi expansions that can increase the functional capacity of one's foric system. There are still societal debates on the ethics of expanding one's nanosystem and the implications it has. I didn't think sleeping less was one of the benefits, though I knew a lot of students who would be all over that perk. Never mind students, I'd be over that too. Then again... Sleeping was pretty nice, and I'd have to give up on it. I casually sidestepped a well-dressed man so engrossed in conversation I was pretty sure he didn't even notice me. He looked young, a few years older than me at most. He'd probably also been a student until fairly recently. Why is a few years older in gold? Ah, time measurement, I'm like, huh? During the era of space travel that led colonists to Arcalis, the caravan ships used a sort of modified Earth calendar and clock to mark the passage of time. When the first caravan arrived to Arcalis, a planet without day-night cycles, or even proper seasons, there was some debate on whether or not to continue this tradition or move to an exclusive calendar more suited to each, uh, more suited to such a world. Solar years on Arcalis are shorter than years on Earth, with roughly one Earth year passing for every one and a half years on Arcalis. Arcalis has a 15-month calendar and keeps a 20-hour day-night cycle that is largely artificial as the planet itself does not have a natural cycle. The biodomes on the day side of the planet darken during the night, while the night side biodomes have artificial lighting to simulate day. Usually day and night are used to refer to this day-night cycle. Sometimes the term cycle is used to refer to the full 20-hour day. Because of the difference in how years are marked, character ages seem higher than they would be in Earth years. That is good to know. My eyes followed him unconsciously, and I couldn't help but wonder if he had gone into the workforce by choice, or if he'd been forced to drop out after an exam like the one I'd just taken. If the latter was true, I suppose he'd still done pretty well for himself. Even if not making the top 50% meant being unable to continue school, anyone who made it this far would get a pretty good job. And to be fair, many people who didn't make prime tier would choose to drop out anyway, Otherwise, they'd end up in one of the two sub-tiers. But everyone knew sub-tiers weren't nearly as good as Prime. You didn't even get live instructors. Everything went through the net with the uni AI teachers. Not that the AI wasn't sophisticated, but still, it's AI. AI has been present on Arcalis since before the very first colonists arrived. Due to events surrounding the so-called planetary AI, 
In current society, any computer with artificial intelligence is severely limited in its ability to access the net or any computer systems in Arcalis's current society. There is a small population of androids on the surface, also known as biosynths or neohumans, but they are barred from entering most large cities and cannot maintain citizenship almost anywhere on the planet. The creation of new biosynths is strictly disallowed in most places as well. Certain types of cybernetic augments face similar regulations, depending on how much of their brain and neural network is cybernetic, or how much of their overall body is constructed from cybernetics. I wonder if one of the guys we date is an android. That would be interesting. The school system in New Albion and other places utilizes virtual, teacher, virtual teachers with AI, but they have very, very limited capacity and, like all AI, extremely limited access to the net and its more important functions. That is very important. <laughs> I think that's a good safeguard. And there was also the lack of nanosystem expansion in the sub-tiers. Wasn't like I couldn't keep learning without it, but competing for the fourth level prime tiers would be even harder since I'd be up against everyone who did get an expansion. I shook my head, pushing the negative thoughts away. The system wouldn't change just from me thinking about what a struggle it was sometimes. With the exam over, all I could do was wait and hope for the best. And if I didn't make prime, then I would fight tooth and nail for as long as possible to get wherever I needed to get, to make it into an off-world research team. So there! <laughs> okay, no more worrying. I was going to just go home, relax, and take a long, hot bath. After three weeks of non-stop studying, I deserved the longest and hottest of baths. Also a quiet dinner, a good book, and definitely no schoolwork. I like the transitions. Ooh, this is your apartment? Hold up. Wait a minute. It's delightful. I love it. It's simple, but bright. So like it feels, it feels comfortable and not stuffy. Just, yeah, I really like this a lot. You, you got some good taste, girl. When I stepped through the door to my apartment, a notification popped up before I even set my things down. I paused, focusing on the message obscuring my vision. Mail? Not just any mail, either. Apparently I had an actual letter rather than a message through the net. How unusual. Dismissing the alert, I pushed the little button by the front door curiously and waited for the mail slot to slide out to reveal its contents. A small cream-colored envelope was nestled inside. I turned it over in my hands curiously. It was blank. No sender. Can't be traced. I see. I ran my fingertips over it, smiling slightly. Paper products weren't terribly uncommon, but they were less efficient. I hadn't gotten a real letter in ages. I pulled the front flap open, wondering who had sent me something like this. Happy birthday. It was a large script with a spider web of gold filigree behind it. The workmanship was quite admirable. Delicate swirls traced a careful pattern over the card. Really, it was beautiful. Too bad my birthday had been seven months ago. But was it? Or is it your birthday now on Earth? Eh? Time difference. Think about it. I flipped the card open and, with an uncomfortable flutter in my stomach, instantly recognized the familiar handwriting. Music just switched. Trent. It made sense. Not many people would send me such a late birthday greeting. And he, of course, knew I loved things like this. But it had been nearly a year since I'd heard anything from him at all. This was the last thing I'd have expected. I skimmed the message, a soft sigh escaping. <sighs> None of it surprised me. There were apologies for being late, then a standard note hoping I was well, saying he missed me, that he hoped to talk the next time he was in the capital, which would apparently be soon. Maybe we could see each other, meet up for coffee, and could I please contact him? And finally, finally, contact information and his exact location on Syrah. Hey, I, I did get it right. 
<laughs> Thank you for putting the pronunciation in there. Pronounced Sira. Sira is a large moon that, in, that orbits our callus. It possesses a breathable atmosphere and a lush, habitable surface that is rich in minerals and other resources. It currently has a large joint colony funded and is cared for by the Triad. Probably not evil. Sira has fewer espers in Arcalis due to the low concentration of nanites and limited system access. However, easy immigration makes it a haven for espers who want to avoid the regulations and limited opportunities they have in Arcalis. In the past few decades, there have been repeated incidents of civil unrest and violence as the citizens have begun to question their place in things and feel that their needs and desires are not being met by their government. Several bids for independence have sprung up and have been thrown down as quickly. But some believe it is only a matter of time before the colony breaks away from our callus permanently. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Oh, that's nice that it shows what traits that these are associated with. So I don't want confident or emotional, but I do want stubborn. So probably I'm going to do stubborn. So I have the option to throw the card in the bin. You don't need or want it. Toss the card aside and try to forget about it. Place the card back in the envelope so you can return it. Okay, so our girl like is really not about this letter at all. So Trent can go heck himself. Whoever he is. I carefully place the card back in the envelope and close the flap. At least I finally knew where he was. After a year. I couldn't pretend I didn't feel anything at all at the sudden message from him. He'd promised he would be in touch, but I knew how easily things like that slipped away from him when he was buried in work. The way he'd become forgetful about everything. The way he'd go from a clean-cut and tidy student to a disheveled mess seemingly overnight. I smiled slightly, feeling a tinge of sadness pull at the corners of my mouth. I was glad he was okay. But I was going to return this card, and that would be my answer. Because I wouldn't be meeting with him. Not soon. Not ever. We had said goodbye a year ago at the station where he caught the transport to Sierra. The memory still brought a faint smile to my face. He'd been so excited then. Finally getting the opportunity to work with a real research team focused on the origins of the so-called fairy espers. And off-world, no less. An amazing opportunity for a student. Oh, really? Fairies, also referred to as F-class, are the result of a natural mutation that occurred in humans rather than changes initiated by the original nanite infection of the first colonists. They were first discovered nearly 30 Archelian years ago, that were only made public about 15 years ago. It's unclear how long they've been around, or when the first fairies began to show up. Dang it, we still got fairies! <laughs> Let's go! Their abilities work differently than nano-espers, and there is still relatively little known about them since they can more easily escape detection. Their abilities fall outside the current ranking system used by Endgame to classify other espers, while the same ranks are still applied, they often have aberrations in their skill sets, or the sheer scale of their abilities. Fairies are also known to be more affected by their emotions when using their abilities, and thus are considered somewhat less stable than nano-espers. Good to know. He'd grin so broadly, showing off that dimple that I loved. And then he'd left. And I got one message, that he'd arrived. Nothing else. And, well, it didn't take many weeks of not hearing anything for me to get the message. We were over. Maybe it was inevitable. We both wanted off-world assignments. I wanted to go to Dion, which would have made it even harder to maintain a relationship with him. And there wasn't much in the way of Esper research going on there. So, separation had been inevitable. All humans on Arcalis are infected with nanites that have altered human physiology. These alterations led to the development of psi abilities in humans, and everyone infected with nanites possesses low levels of psi that permit them to fully utilize the nanosystem. However, in some humans, these changes triggered additional mutations, which led to the development of more powerful psi abilities. These humans were the first espers. Currently, there are two known types of espers. 
N-Class, or Nano Espers, whose abilities stem from their Nanite-inflicted mutations, and F-Class, or Fairy Espers, whose abilities stem from a mutation unrelated to the Nano System. Espers on Arcalis are subject to certain regulations, particularly the stronger ones. Most of them become members of Endgame. This has become a way to ensure they contribute positively to society and don't cause issues for normal people, though this was not the original goal of Endgame. Places with fewer nanites tend to have fewer espers. This includes Sira, Dion, and New Terra. I just hadn't expected it so soon. Even so, surely he didn't think after completely falling out of my life like that he could just pop back up because he missed me. I'd missed him too. And I'd had to just deal with it. Get over him. Focus on my studies. I had walked away from that relationship months ago, and I wasn't walking back to it now. At least I know where to send the card, though. I set the card on the table by the door so I wouldn't forget about it. Tomorrow, first thing, I would send it back. For tonight... Relaxing, and not thinking about stressful things. Ooh, nice. I made my way to the sofa, shedding clothes as I went along. <laughs> and flop. Perfect. There's my girl in all her relaxing glory. <laughs> Amazing. So tired. I flopped down on the pillows, letting out a soft groan. And now that I was down, I didn't actually want to move again. I could just sleep there. For the next seven to ten days. I opened my eyes, staring up at the ceiling, a slight smile coming to my lips. Well, not that long. I'd never hear the end of it if I missed the party for my maybe having made prime tier. And besides, I was pretty sure if I didn't get up and find some food, my stomach was going to devour itself. I sat up and finally made my way to the cupboards to see what I actually had in the house that could potentially qualify as a quiet dinner. Ooh, fancy. In the meantime, I flipped on the news with a small flick of my hand, because watching it in my head while trying to work out dinner would have been a nightmare. One ear was on what the impressively quaffed man was saying about another terrorist attack in New Albion, this time much closer to the cities at the eastern edge of the Twilight Wastes. New Albion is one of the largest nations on the day side of the planet. It is made up of over 40 domed cities, seven of which are megacities. The largest dome is Sasalis, which is one of the largest cities on the planet. New Albion has a population of nearly 245 million people, and is a member of a three-nation alliance known as the Triad, and is a wealthy, affluent nation with a great deal of power and influence over global and system politics. And Twilight Wastes refer to the entire Twilight region of Arcalis, that is, the part of the planet that exists between the day and night sides, and is locked in eternal twilight. The Wastes, which extend to the edge of the Trinity Desert and the Nocta... Gelita? Hold on. I was hoping that this would tell me how to pronounce it. <clears throat> Hold on. This and this is the only part of planet with liquid water and plant life. Though there are frequent and harsh storms that spiral across the Wastes, the flora and fauna have evolved to withstand the volatile weather. The wastes are divided by a sea that runs along the meridian of Arcalis. Called the Infinity Sea by those on the day side and the Ouroboros Sea by those on the night side, this, side, th this sea is the largest and most substantial body of water on the planet. The Twilight region is neutral territory. Outside of specific areas closer to the biodomes, international treaties prohibit any incursions into the region. Endgame's Border Patrol units ensure unauthorized entries are dealt with as quickly as possible. And they shut down another drug cartel in Sasalis. Yeah, Sasalis. Hey! Two for two. Nice. The capital city of New Albion. Boasting a population of over 20 million, this megacity is widely regarded as one of the more beautiful and wealthy cities in the Triad. It is a typical dayside city with wide, clean streets, colorful architecture, and copious lush parks and gardens. Though relatively safe with its low crime rate, Sasalis is not without problems. 
including the same problems that plague many other cities on the planet. The city government has a bad habit of sweeping issues under the rug, or downplaying their severity for the sake of keeping up appearances. Crimson got the blame for them both, as they usually did. Crimson is an organized crime syndicate that is located in Delphine, but which has influence all across Arcalis. They frequently engage in violent skirmishes with the governments on both sides of the planet, as well as other organizations and criminal families, of which there are four that are notable. Few people outside of Endgame know who is really at the helm of this group. However, even if their identities were public, many believe that shutting them down would leave too vast a power vacuum in Delphine, causing more harm than good. They remain a thorn in Endgame's side, and the groups are known to clash frequently. Some believe they were also responsible for the incident around 10 Arcalian years ago, which resulted in the death of Endgame's previous queen-ranked Esper. However, this is currently unsubstantiated. Crimson is known to have quite a few ranked Espers in its midst, including a king rank and a queen rank. Who's the king? Because uh, from, from, from what I read on the story thing for this game, our girl's going to be Queen Esper, so who's King Esper? Another reason to get off world as soon as I can. <sighs> I huffed into satisfaction as I stared down my cupboard. It was pretty empty, to say the least. Unless you counted one foil packet of biscuits and a tin of mixed vegetables. Pathetic. I mean, to be fair, I hadn't really had time to place any orders or do any shopping before the exam. For the last few weeks, I'd been eating mostly toast or whatever stray pieces of fruit I could find. Mom would kill me if she knew. Or at least lecture me about maintaining a proper diet. Well, now what? Do you have takeout on your world? <laughs> Pizza, maybe? Delivery schedules for the nearby market were predictably filled, which meant I'd have to go shopping in person or eat out. I haven't really done that much lately. There was a new bistro nearby I'd been wanting to try. Couldn't hurt to put the shopping off another day and do something fun instead. That was kind of the whole point tonight. Relaxing and fun. Though I had been looking forward to dinner without pants, then my much anticipated bath with bubbles and candles, and most definitely a good book. Such was life. Decision made, I flipped off the screen and went to change before heading out again. Alright. Well, our girl's gonna go get some food, but I think we'll save that for another time. <laughs> I think we got, like, a good chunk into this, she says, having mostly red glossary terms. <laughs> but they were all super interesting, and... I really like how they're incorporated into this game. It's a lot easier to navigate through it than it was in Changeling, so big fan of that. Uh, I love the art so far. Our girl's cute. Uh, we got another adorable mom here, so I'm, uh, I'm enjoying her a lot so far. We got an ex that hopefully won't be a problem later. And we have yet to meet our boys, so maybe next time we'll actually run into them properly. That would be nice. But yeah, I think that'll do it for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far, and I will catch you later, I guess. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.